Hello, welcome back. Here we're talking about subtracting fractions again with like denominators. This is part one. So I told you before, and I'll say it again, in order to add or subtract any fractions, the denominators, the bottom numbers of the fractions have to be the same thing. So when we added fractions earlier, we had to have the denominators the same in order to do anything, and we're doing the same thing here. So it's very, very similar to adding fractions. We kept the denominator the same in our answer, and we just added the numerators, the top numbers together. Here, it's gonna be the same thing, except we'll be keeping the denominator the same, just like before, but here we'll be subtracting the numerators. That's the difference. Adding and subtracting fractions are actually very, very similar to, uh, to each other. In one case, we add the numerators. Here, we're going to be adding the denominators. So let's get some practice uh, here, and we'll use our magnets as we go along here to get some additional, so we can understand what's going on. Let's take a look at the fraction 4 fifths, and we want to subtract from that the fraction 3 fifths. So the first thing we do is we check, are the denominators the same? In order to add or subtract fractions, the denominators must be the same. We'll talk a little bit more about why in just a minute, but for now, keep the denominator the same in your answer. The, the denominator has to be a five. You do not subtract the denominators. You, you keep the same denominator in your answer, just like for adding. We keep it here. Now in the numerator, which is the top, we have a four and a three, but we have a minus sign, so it's four minus three. So instead of adding them, we basically subtract them. It's very, very simple. Four minus three, as you know, is one, and then of course five stays along for the ride, one fifth. And then we ask ourselves, can we simplify this fraction by dividing the top or the bottom, or the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same number? We really can't do anything. We can't divide top and bottom by anything that's going to make these numbers any smaller. So one fifth is the final answer. So let's talk about why this makes sense, right? So here we have four out of five pieces of a pizza. So we have a pizza cut into, let's go ahead and call it five pieces. So one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. Here is five fifths. That's what we have, a pizza cut into five pieces. But here we have four of those five pieces. One, two, three, four. That's what we have here. This is how much pizza we have. Now here we have three out of five pieces of a pizza. So let's build another pizza. There's one, there's two, there's three, uh, there's four, and there's five. So here's another pizza, again, cut into five pieces, but here I only have three of them. One, two, three. So what we're saying is we have four out of five pieces of a pizza, and here we have three out of five pieces of a pizza, but instead of adding them together, making it larger, what we're gonna do is subtract them. Think about it, if you have four pieces of something and you take away three pieces of something, then you only have one piece left. And here we're saying we have four pieces of pizza. The five tells us how big the slices are, basically. We have four of them here and we have three of them here. We subtract them, and so what we actually get when we subtract them, four minus three is one which is the answer, one-fifth here. Because if we start with this, and we take away three of those pieces like this, what are we left with? Only one piece left. Addition would be if we add these together, subtraction is we take this amount and we take it away. We only have that one piece left. So we have one-fifth there. So that's why when we, take, when we check to make sure the denominators are the same, we keep the same denominator in our answer. Because I've been telling you before that I want you to start viewing these fraction wedges as things that you can count. You don't really want to add or subtract wedges of different sizes. I mean, you could, but they're different. You, they, they won't make a lot of sense to add one-third or subtract one-third and one-fourth because the size of the slices there would be different. Here, all the slices are the same thing, so it's a simple matter of just subtracting them or adding them together. That's why we keep the same denominator in the same, because here we have four out of five pieces. We take away three out of those five pieces. How many do we have left? One out of five pieces of the pizza uh, there. And of course, we try to simplify that, and we really can't uh, simplify any further, so we're done, right? All right, let's go on. I'm gonna leave this up here. We'll Kind of, kind of refer back to it later. Let's take a look at the next problem. Let's say we have three-fourths, and we want to subtract from it one-fourth. Now again, the first problem had the problem written on its side, horizontal like this. You can also see the problem stacked on top of each other. It's fine either way. Now we check. Four and four, those are the denominators. So we keep the same denominator. We don't subtract them, we don't add them. We keep the same denominator. There's a four down here. Now what do we have on top? Three minus, because there's a minus, one. 
3 minus 1. That goes in the numerator. Instead of adding them, we subtract them. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 out of 4 pieces. Now what this is telling us is if we have 3 out of 4 pieces of a pizza and we take away from that 1 out of 4 pieces, then we should have 2 pieces left over. 3 pieces minus 1 piece should give us 2 pieces out of 4, which tells us the, sli the, the how big the slices are there. But we check, is this fully simplified? No, it's not, because we can divide the top and the bottom by 2, because those are both even numbers. So let's take and divide the top by 1. I'm sorry, not by 1. We're going to divide the top by 2, and we'll also divide the bottom by 2. We divide top and bottom by whatever we want. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2. So we think the answer is 1 half. Does this make any sense? Let's check it out. Let's build this here. What we're saying is that this is 1 fourth of a pizza, 2 fourths of a pizza, 3 fourths of a pizza, and 4 fourths of a pizza. We've cut a pizza into 4 equal slices, but we only have 3 of those slices, so this is actually how much pizza we have in the top fraction. The bottom fraction is one fourth. That is this amount of the pizza, one out of four slices. Instead of adding them together, if we add them together, we would just put it over here. It would actually make a whole pizza if we add them together, but we're not. We're taking away one slice from here. So it's like you take away one slice. What do you have left? You have this. You have one fourth, two fourths. So we have one fourth, two fourths. This is what you get whenever you uh, subtract it, because if you start with three out of four pieces and you take one of these away, you have this much left, which is two out of four pieces. But you can see right away that two out of four pieces of anything is exactly the same as one half. You can actually see it represents the same amount. So the answer is two fourths. That's correct. That's a perfectly fine way of saying it. If you start with three pieces and you say, take away one piece, you should only have two pieces left out of, out of, of, uh, sl out of four pieces of the pizza, slice in the four slices. But a simpler way to write it is as one half. This represents the exact same amount of pizza as that. All right, so I think I'll do one or maybe two more where we use our magnets, but more or less now I wanna take the training wheels off and just solve the problems without using the magnets. They're really good to visualize, but we do have to get good at doing this without putting magnets in place and counting anything. So what do we have? Next problem is going to be uh, eight ninths and we're going to subtract one ninth. We're subtracting fractions. The denominators must be the same, and they are. So the denominator of our answer will be a nine. Next, eight minus, nine, minus one. Those are the numerators, eight and one. So we subtract them, eight minus one. And what do we get? Eight minus one is seven, and it's out of nine pieces. So if you start with eight out of nine pieces, and you take away one out of nine pieces, then you're only gonna have seven pieces left, of course, out of nine, seven ninths. And you cannot simplify this any further because you can't divide top and bottom by anything to make that simpler. So we just say that's the final answer. All right, problem number four. Let's say we have seven tenths and we're subtracting from that four tenths. All right, what do we have? The denominators here, 10 and 10, they're the same denominator. So we keep the same denominator in the answer. Then we have a seven and a four and of course they're subtracted. So the numerator is seven minus four. What do we get? Seven minus four is three, and so it's three out of 10 pieces. Three out of 10 pieces. So it makes sense. If you start with seven out of 10 pieces of a pizza, and you take away four slices, you start with seven slices and you take away four slices, you should get have three slices left, of course, out of 10. And so is this fully simplified? Can we divide top and bottom by something to make it simpler? And we can't because this is an odd number and this is an even number, and we can't divide top and bottom by two or by three or anything else, so it's just three out of 10. Now, this will be the last problem where I, I kind of use the magnets to help us kind of visualize. I do think it's, it's worth doing, but after this one, we're not gonna basically do this anymore. So there's one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths. Here's five tenths. Here's six tenths. There is seven tenths. So this is the amount of pizza represented by this fraction. This is four tenths. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths. What this thing is saying here is if you start with this much pizza, seven out of 10 slices, and you subtract four out of 10 slices, subtract this much, then it would be starting with this and taking away this amount of pizza and pulling it away. What do you have left? Three out of 10 slices. If you start with this amount and you take away the four slices, you have three out of 10. That's basically what that means. 
Now I am going to go ahead and just kind of leave this up here. Well, kind of, why not? We can just leave it there. But we're not going to use the magnets anymore because it's very important for you to get good at this without, you know, drawing pictures. I, I think it's good to do, but we don't want to do it for every problem. All right, let's go over here and solve the next problem. Let's say we have three sevenths and we'll subtract from it one seventh. All right, the denominator is a seven and a seven, so denominator is the same. We keep it in the answer. And we have a three and a one, which means we subtract three minus one. What do we have? Three minus one is two out of seven. Can we simplify this? No, we can't. We can't divide top and bottom by anything uh, else to make this simpler, so we keep the answer. It's two out of seven pieces. Okay, that was problem number five. Actually, that was the halfway mark. Let's take a look at problem number six. Let's say we have seven out of 12 slices of pizza and we'll subtract three out of 12. Now the denominators are the same, so we keep it in our final answer. And then we subtract the top number, seven minus three. So over here we'll have seven minus three. When you do seven minus three, what do you get? You get four, and of course it's still out of 12 pieces. And then you ask yourself, can I simplify this? Can I divide top and bottom? Well, actually I can divide top and bottom by four. I could also divide top and bottom by two. That's fine too. But if you divide by two, then you'll get some other answer and you'll be able to divide by two again. You'll have to do it two times. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. But let's, you know, let's just, we can recognize we can take four twelfths and divide the top and bottom by a larger number. We can divide by four, both divisible by four. Four divided by four is one, and 12 divided by four is three, because three times four is 12. And so the answer we get is one third. So if you start with seven slices out of 12 and you take away three slices, then you're going to have four slices left. This is the right amount of pizza, but this is just a simpler way to write the exact same amount of pizza. So that's the final answer. All right, let's take a look at problem seven. Take a look at five eighths, and we'll take away, subtract from that one eighth. The denominators are the same, so because we're subtracting, we keep that in our final answer, and we have five minus one, so we have five minus one in the numerator. Five minus one, as you know, is four, and then we have eight. Now, can we simplify this? Well, we can divide top and bottom by Four. You could also divide by two, but then you would get something you would have to divide by two again. So let's do it that way. Let's not do the same exact thing every time. We know we can divide by, um, we know we can divide by four because four certainly works, but let's divide by two just to get some variety here. Four divided by two is two, and eight divided by two is four. So we get two fourths, but we see, okay, we can divide by two again. So let's go ahead and divide this by two, and divide this by two, and two divided by two is one, and four divided by two is two. So you get one half. So is this fully simplified? Yes, I can't make it that any simpler. And you also should ask yourself, does it make sense? The answer I got was four out of eight pieces. If I have eight pieces and I have four of those pieces, then I have half the pizza. That's what we have here. But that's the same thing as what we got here, two out of four pieces. We simplified it again. Here's two fourths is also a half, which is also four eighths as, as a half. It all means the same amount of stuff. It's just that the fraction looks a little bit different. All right, we have only three problems left. What do we have here? Let's take a look at five tenths and we'll subtract from that three tenths. These denominators are the same, they're 10, so we keep the denominator the same at 10. And we have a five minus three in the numerator, five minus three. What is five minus three? That's going to be two, and then you have 10 here. Now this is the final answer, that's great, but can you simplify it? Yes, you can, they're both divisible by two. So we'll take the two tenths, and we'll divide the top and bottom by two. We can divide this by two, we can divide this by two. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and so the answer is 1 fifth. We get 1 fifth for the answer. So if you start out with 5 pieces out of 10 and you take away 3 pieces or slices, then you will only have 2 slices left out of a 10 slice pizza, right? That's correct. But a simpler way of writing the same amount of pizza is just to cut a, a new pizza into 5 slices and only take 1. It's the same thing. All right? So, home stretch. Only two more problems. And here's the next one. What about eight twelfths? And we'll subtract from that three twelfths. 
The denominators are the same, which is 12. So we'll go ahead and keep that in our final answer. And the numerator, we have eight and a three, and it's a minus, so it's eight minus three in the numerator. Eight going down seven, six, five, eight minus three is five, and you get five twelfths. Can you simplify this? No, we can't. We cannot divide top and bottom by something to make these numbers simpler, uh, or, or yeah, smaller, and so we just say five twelfths is the final answer. All right, now we have our very last problem. We have eight ninths, and we're subtracting from it five ninths. First thing we check, are the denominators the same? Yes, they are, so we keep it in the final answer. And then on top we have an eight minus five. So we write that as eight minus five. What is eight minus five? When you subtract that, you get a three. And you get, of course, out of nine pieces. So if you start with eight pieces and out of nine, and you take away five pieces, of course, when the pizza is sliced into nine pieces, you will have three pieces left, but this can be simplified. We can divide top and bottom by three. So let's take that three ninths, and they're both divisible by three. So we'll divide by three, divide by three. Three divided by three is one, and nine divided by three is three. So you get the answer of one third. So the answer we got of three ninths is correct, but to make it simpler, this is a simpler way of writing the same exact amount of pizza, and you write that as one third. So here we have conquered the idea of subtracting fractions with like denominators. You can see it's the same process as addition other than the fact that when we subtract, we have to subtract the numbers on top, the numerators, instead of adding them. But the denominators have to be the same to subtract them, just like for addition, and we keep the same denominator in the answer, just like addition, and we just subtract the numerators and simplify the answers. So I'd like you to practice all of these yourself. Follow me on to part two, and we'll wrap up the concept of subtracting fractions when they have like denominators.